We're starting at 1600 today in the Kings Indian speed run, going all the way up to 1700. Let me know in the comments, which game was your favorite from today's episode? The goal is to go onwards and upwards. Get our bishop out, d6. And then knight out. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of bishop uh, c4. So I'm going to keep doing this for now. Like, most people seem to be allowing this. I've probably done this in, like, feels like 10 games or something. Like, just non-stop. This is the first time someone's actually done this, which I think is the, be the better move to do. Like, I think you should be keeping your bishop. Although most people end up taking or somehow losing their bishop when there's no need to. No need to get black the bishop pair. Um... I still think it's good for black to get the uh, get the center clarified like this. I mean, this bishop's pretty strong. This guy can be targeted. Knight c6, e5. So a few ways to play. Like one of them would be like this. I'm probably gonna go for something a little more. I guess a little more direct. I'll play um, knight c6 here. Yeah, d6 is so that they don't hit you in the face with e5, pretty much. That's true there, Bunglet. Let's take here and see what kind of guy he is. Because if he wants to take here, I'm going to pretend that my two bishops are worth so much. You know, <laughs> really looking forward to that. I'm going to take... Rook e8, gain some time. I expect the bishop to go back. Bishop here, I think we can consider taking. Yeah, so this makes sense. And I'm going to use this time to play knight b4 and do what every schoolboy is taught. Weak pawn, control the square in front of the pawn. So right there. That's that's the square I'm really trying to control at the moment. C6, bishop e6, plant a knight on d5. That is the description. Um, let's actually start with the knight here. When he plays bishop here, I want to be able to play f6. So I wanted to block the diagonal. Yeah, fair enough, G Madrid. The offer was there, though. I, I appreciate it all the same. Bishop back. I think it's uh, time to solidify this. Now, usually when you see something like this, you want to capture. Let's say the queen was here, then you wouldn't want to capture because the rook would take back. But anytime that a non-rook piece has to capture back on, on e1, you're usually pretty interested in doing it. Just kind of the, uh, the unwritten rule. This knight will be, you know, the same way that I tend to play c3 as white when black has a knight on c6. And by the same token, something like f6 to take away squares that this knight might want to utilize. Same same concept applies here. All right, where is this knight jumping to? That's what I want to know. Let's find out. Tier 3 for 17 months from Jason Cassidy. The best 17 months of his life. And that's a married man. Thank you to Jcass. Whoa! It's a high-octane move. From Sam the Eagle. So the question is, if I move my bishop all the way back, and your knight has to move, then my bishop can just take that pawn for free. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna chill. Bishop back to C. I'm not gonna put my bishop here, where it might be... Subject to a few tactics. But I see this move and it's like, okay, I go back. I'm still attacking the pawn. You're going to have to move your knight. 
So I'm just going to go back and take it next move. Doc Banner, thanks for the 19 months. And Neil, the lap TFT. Cheers, buddy. That's a big raid. 24 people, but I'm telling you, Neil just went toe to toe with Hikaru. Toe to toe. Welcome, King of the Arena Variety. Low Lauren, Malone Ranger, Adam Hart Lover, Metal Chess, Mr. PH. We got the crew here. We got good people around. Let's uh, play Rook here. Target this. I'm doing this to cover the E7 square. The audio is not synced with the video for you. I think slash hope that's a you problem. Is that a anyone else problem? Cause that's sounding like a you problem, my boy. Let's get the king active. Okay, so the squares are all covered, but I, I am trying to trade. So I think I'm going to go queen here and look to play rook e8. D5. My goodness. Tell this guy to slow down. What are these moves? These are very serious. I think I'm gonna have to take that. I'm not sure if he's trying to take this or what the plan is. Cause remember if I take this, there's still no checks. So that's the only scary thing. He takes uh, a7, then I have rook d7 to guard that. I also like bishop c5, queen uh, g5 check. But yeah, bishop c5 is nice. It's a couple things there. Mm-hmm. So if check, it looks like the king can just slide somewhere like that safely. Now, if it did, you gotta be pretty happy with it in general. Maybe I could go queen b5, bishop c5. Um, and if the king goes here, I don't know if I have much better than just going back. So for that reason, I think I'm just gonna play this. Nice and simple. Mm, check, so we go here. We need to get our bishop out. Even a queen trade makes a little bit of sense here. I think we can probably get one in a nicer way though without doubling our pawns. Simplify your life. There we go. Now we got the king cut off. Which way are you going? <laughs> Which way are you going, boy? Gotcha. You go this way, I got this pawn. You go that way, I got that pawn. Like, this was a solid game. First of all, people keep falling for this. I don't think it's a big deal. Like, it's not like black's just better. But people keep allowing it, which I'm not sure is the best. Here, I think black 
just has a great position. You want to focus on things like bishop here, maybe f6 to take squares, queen up, rook over, those would be your candidate moves. And just focus on this pawn near the end of the game. And you saw, like, I didn't really pay attention to it until later when it's really easy to gang up on that. And I could play f5, bishop g7, just, you know, easy moves to threaten that pawn. Oh no, but just they're just sad on us here. We, we can't get the white pieces to save our lives. That's okay. They want the they want the hurt. Keep putting the hurt on them with the uh, black pieces here. No problem at all. Now if we castle, I think someone might get a little thirsty for a move like this. I'm curious what what if I go here. I'm curious what he's gonna do. What my man Santiago is up to. What are you doing here, Santiago? Really? You giving me your bishop, Santiago? You giving me your pawn and your rook? Santi? This can't be correct. Now, many, many options. This one, of course, a tremendous option. But, I'm sorry, Santiago, I just... I'm not even gonna take it. Your, your piece isn't worth that much to me. Okay? Your pieces are poverty, man. I don't want them. It's not worth my time. I'm just gonna bring that bishop back and enjoy my great diagonal. King's Indian bishop. I don't even want his pieces. They're just not worth it for me. Let's uh, hit him with this and if c3, e5. This move I think we do like to see. You know, in general, knight e5. Yeah, some good stuff there. Get some trades in. Yeah, yeah, your pieces are no good here, man. They don't... They don't hold value. And now we need something, right? Because we have the we have the bishops here, so we need something to open up. Just a little something. Let's go c6. All right. Probably queen c7 is a nice intermediate move. Even queen a5 makes some sense. I'm just gonna go queen c7, nice and chill. That pawn looks like it's going nowhere. A whole lot of nowhere. Bishop d7, don't have to do anything too special. Rook b8, look for trades. Ah, he's opening the position, eh? Well, this one looks like a, a case where I don't think I really am supposed to be taking all this. So I'm actually going to play d5. This pawn is still going to be a target. Something like bishop g4, for example. I'm liking bishop g4. Looks kind of difficult to me. Okay, rook b8 is always going to be a good move, but bishop g4 is looking correct. He's got to take with the pawn here, unless he wants to lose this guy. Okay, my bishop is... I mean, it's taken everything on this diagonal. It really has. Okay, I don't think he has a threat here. But he's, he's like, threatening to make a threat. I don't believe it, though. We go here. Bring the bishop back. King Spence, you got to keep an eye on that bishop, man. He's, he's going to be back for even more. Trust me on that. Let's uh, bring this guy here. Keep everything protected. Watch out for the back rank mate. I can see him forgetting about it, you know? So let's say we go rook here and he takes. Do I have any like tricky moves like king h8? Because at the, at the moment I'm just trying to set traps. I, I also am thinking about h5. And h5 looks like the kind of trap that I think the people would enjoy, you know? h5 you know attack the queen there's no way you can keep guarding that he takes because he's all high energy high octane wow i'm the one with the pin but then i take on g3 jokes on you <laughs> oh no my queen
Thank you, Mattis. That was actually going to be my next comment. I fully and wholeheartedly agree that after pawn takes, it would not be pawn takes here. It would be bishop d4 check to make a statement about how important that dark squared bishop was and then take his queen. 100%. No, no doubt in my mind that would be the move. Where do we want to put this thing? I think just back here looks nice. You know what they say, Mattis, the longer you've been watching the stream, the better chess player you are. When you watch chess pro, you just become a better player over time, naturally. Here, rookie four. Rookie four is nice, it simplifies. Hmm. Queen there, eh? I wish there were some uh, sneaky traps that I could uh, uncork here. I don't think there are. Bishop g5, there's queen d1. I was going to play queen here, but he has bishop f1. Honestly, though, I don't think Santiago is going to find it. I don't think Santiago would find it. Let's go here. We play we play the man here. Santiago just not cape. This is way too far away, man. This is a long range bishop. Too far. Too far. No, but this isn't hope chess yet. This is hope chess. But right now, this is just me trading queens. This is just a good chess move. You see? Didn't even have to bother, you know, it wasn't even the discussion. Didn't even have to uh, worry about it. I said that bishop was going to play an important role. Here it is. Playing that role. Mm-hmm. Well, he looks like a guy that's going to play that move, so we just have to wait for it. We just have to sit here and make moves that... There we go. All right, right on cue. Appreciate that, buddy. Sometimes you just got to sit there and wait, you know, good things come to those who wait. That's what they say. Just got to sit there, be patient, and just know when you're playing a 1500, you can't expect the best move from them every time. Trust me, they'd be rated a lot higher. Once in a while, you just have to expect the worst move in the position. That's why they're 1500s. And there he was, Santiago coming in hot with the worst move in the position. Respect for Santi. What happened early? Oh, well, th this is just another example. Like when you're playing this King's Indian setup and they give away the dark square bishop. Guys, it's never good. You can't be doing that. This bishop is so important for white. As soon as you, you give up uh, the dark square bishop, light square pawns, I mean, you saw how uh, that bishop pretty much ruled the board after that. So, be very careful. I'm playing Poonam 1990, and we did get the white pieces. All right, we are playing against one of the only openings where you can't do a King's Indian attack. You just can't do it. I'm sorry, it can't happen. This is the number one way to prevent it. But on the bright side, if someone prevents you from playing the King's Indian attack, they are playing a Scandinavian after all. They are playing a Scandinavian. So I think overall, good things, uh, good things could still happen. Let's see what our opponent plays against this one. Because if they play d4, which a lot of people get tempted by, then we can set up the whole thing again. We will still get a King's Indian attack. Oh, he goes here. Okay, okay. d3. 
Look, it's not my first choice, but I'll take it. I'll take it. It's it's kind of something like one. You know, this is all right. All right. Uh, let's go Queenie two. We go Queenie two here. I'm really trying to make this work. Cause I, I'd love that knight to be here. Yeah. See, he was he was definitely going to um, he was definitely going to take and try to trade queens. So we don't want that to happen. Let's go like this. And I think it might end up, yeah, it might end up looking like normal. C3 when he plays knight here. I think this is okay. Yeah, we're getting her done. This looks pretty normal. Go us. Oh, H3, the bait of all baits. Oh my goodness, it's just so, it's so predictable, it's so easy. Gimme that. Gimme that. That's for me. All right, now we just need to uh, complete our development here. Let's say this guy, you know, maybe bring Rook to D1, King to H2, these kind of things. I had a feeling he was gonna do this, which I am definitely psyched about. Remember, people play this move because they're very excited to, um, you know, get the, the pieces flowing. They're like, oh yeah, huge attack down the F-file. But guys, let your opponents bait themselves. This is exactly what you want. Look at this bishop now, this is gorgeous. Right, I have to play queen b5, attacking this pawn. I mean, I'm either gonna win a pawn or I'm gonna win the queen. Yeah, it looks like it's the queen today. I mean, him playing f5, he's probably pretty psyched about that move. But realistically, that's the move that loses in the game two more moves later, just how it is. So when people play f5 without their light squared bishop, you should be thanking them. You should be thanking them. Black's position with no light squared bishop, opening, the position for the two bishops and weakening all the light squares? No, no, that cannot happen. That cannot happen. So anytime they're doing that, don't get scared that they're attacking you. Say thank you for opening your bishop and make them pay. Let's see if we can remember our setup. D3, King's Indian attack. We're gonna get this going, get castled, and remember knight D2 if he plays this, because we don't want to trade queens. Okay, just goes here. Bishop g4, just the move I was looking to see. Let's play our c3 move. It's a nice one, take those squares from the knight. And now we're gonna go with our famous queen e1. So if you're new to the speed run, this might seem like a whole lot of like, well, how am I supposed to remember all that? But remember, I've been doing this since 800 ELO, the exact same stuff. So it's becoming like a little bit more of a habit. Knight h4. That's our typical move. Queen e1 is the move to get out of the pin. Allows us to play knight there. We want to play king h2, knight f5, and maybe eventually expand on the queen side with these moves and get knight c4. Okay, bishop there. We know we're going to take this. We don't have to grab it right away. Let's play another... Very useful move. Ooh, I see this move. I'm definitely taking that. Yes, please. All right, that's a good start. Now, uh, how about we improve some of the rest of our pieces? Queen e2, now that there's no light square bishop, I think the queen certainly belongs on uh, e2 compared to e1. I think we can get this knight out as well. B4, A4, and this bishop never really needs to move. Like it's not a not a priority. Just gain some space. And take a look at how the knight's being, uh, you know, basically corralled here. Can't go to. B4, C5, F4. So the knights are really being dominated here, which is sort of how you want to handle them. Knight there, I can take that and give him triple pawns, but I don't think that's the best. <laughs> it's tempting, but I don't think it's the best. I like H4. I like continuing 
to restrict these knights. H4, the knight pretty much has to go back. Now all of those squares are covered. That knight can dream about getting here, but in one move, I can just play F3 and that's not a reality anymore. All right, so I'm, I think I've done a pretty good job of uh, taking the relevant squares. I'm gonna try bishop h3 here. Why no f4 like before? Well, he's got a bishop pointed right at my king, and he's also got a rook on that open file, so I don't think I want to mess with that. No thank you. Now, in a position like this, I mean, I think I might just keep expanding over here. I don't see any particular threats at the moment, so I'm going to start with a5. Just uh, gaining a bunch of space. Queen f7, okay, what are you doing here? I still don't see the threat, if I'm honest. Should still be okay. Remember, we're also hitting this uh, this bishop here. F3 looks like a, another kind of useful move that I might be interested in. Knight E3 into D5. I've been thinking about playing A6, but this bishop here can develop even to D2, and it sort of gets the job done. So I might just play bishop D2. See what he's uh, see what he's cooking up over here. Rook d1, put some pressure on that bishop. Yeah, I don't see the threat right now, if I'm honest. The knights kind of look menacing, but this square is covered, and all these squares are covered. Right? Pretty much every single one. Okay, let's bring the rook over. Bishop back. Okay, he's giving me a pawn here, which I will not hesitate to take. Especially because <laughs> it means... We don't just win the pawn, we win pretty much everything he's got. We, we just, we win the house, essentially. So that's, that's not a bad thing to win. Bishop there, pretty good move, honestly. I have to admit I missed that one. I was gonna play uh, rook takes d8 and bishop f7. Alas, this move is strong. However, it might pay off for us. In a good way. Oh, that's an impressive move. However, while it looks like I may have blundered a piece, it was actually all calculated. GG. Wow, look at that. Blunder a piece into a checkmate. Just Grandmaster things. Well, I have to say, we've had games that look exactly like this. So this should really be, really be something to, uh, to take note of. So I've had probably this exact position, maybe 10 plus times in this speed run. This move kills the, the knight squares. This move gets out of the pin. Knight h4 almost always wins the bishop, or you get knight f5, you win that bishop. And then from here, I love to expand the pawns, put, put my knight here, queen here. This bishop, I don't usually need to move at all in the game. And just make sure that wherever the knights are moving, that you've, you've kind of got the squares covered. That's what I did, like, none of these knights could move anywhere the entire game, and okay, eventually he just blundered, that's sort of how it happened. Pretty convincing game. Pretty convincing setup, rather. We'll take the win, 101. Yeah, the C1 bishop has moved. Like, let's say we played 101 games. The C1 bishop has probably moved like 40 times or something. <laughs> I think that's really the case. It's not an important piece to, to move in this uh, entire setup. And the same thing goes for black with the bishop on c8. How do you connect the rooks? Well, look what I did, right? Bishop there, rook there. Also, the rook can be very useful even on the a file. And rook a2, rook d2 is another way to get the rook out without moving the bishop. So either just a small move to do this, or rook a2, rook d2, or leave it there and push these pawns and you'll often find use for it down uh, on the queen side. Oh, we're playing uh, someone from Iran. Let's see 
what we got here. We do have a, uh, a full King's Indian. D6, important to not let this move happen. Let's get our e5 move in. He decides to take, so we're going to take back. Not going to allow the queens to trade. And very important move, of course, he's got that knight there like that, which means we need to play c6. So one thing is if I play this, I'm worried about this move. And then I might need to play queen e8 again. So I think I'm going to start with just queen e8 here. Followed by maybe h6 and knight h5. A4, some uh, good stuff, good stuff from my opponent. A4, I'm definitely thinking about A5, but then the plans and the position will change a little bit because white's probably gonna follow up with B5 and then Bishop A3 becomes a threat. So I think for now, I'm just gonna leave, uh, leave the pawns and just go Knight H5. But normally, after a move like this, I'd really be considering a5. Because he can't play a3 because the rook was pinned when the bishop was on c1. Now it's a lot different. Um, definitely I'm going to slot this move in, knight f4. If he takes, I'm getting his dark square bishop. That is tremendous. I expect he will play that. Okay, dark square bishop for me. I can only say thank you. It is just always, always a good thing. Okay, so I'm gonna play the a5 move. Even if he plays a3 now, it doesn't matter, I'm uh, I'm content. Here, we wanna leave this pawn here. We never wanna push or take. It gives white that square, so let's go knight e5 instead. And I did a5 because if he goes a3, take, take, well, then my rook is actually developing there without even moving, which is a pretty good deal. Some pieces are uh, making appearances in my position. Unwanted appearances, I would say. Need to keep my pieces developing. Hmm. Maybe rook here. Notice how, once again, my bishop on c8 pretty much has not moved. <laughs> this is exactly what I was saying. That bishop can play like a large part of the game without moving, and it's not a problem. Like, it's not a big... Not a big issue. Okay, maybe this uh, guy's trying to go there, but for the moment, rook b2 looks like it'll force the queen there. So I'm gonna try to take that square away from the knight by forcing the queen to go there. Yes. And now if I attack the knight, I think it's gotta go somewhere else, which I'm not sure it's too thrilled about. A2 pawn is hanging as well. Knight b3, think I might even push this pawn and then try to take on a2. I'm just attacking the knight here, nothing crazy. But the knight doesn't have that beautiful square it wants to go to anymore. And we've stayed true to some of our setups. We've played knight f4. We've got the dark square bishop and they don't have it. So I've been playing pretty much exclusively on the dark squares here. And yeah, this knight's in a tough spot now. Knight here takes and there's no queen b3 because rook takes e2. And knight here, maybe rook a3. The pin looks nice. Okay, time to develop this bishop. If you're gonna attack me, then you're gonna cause me to move. Okay, fine. Bishop e6. I will develop the piece. Hmm. 
Hmm. That knight is looking pretty trapped here. Like, this move, this move. It all looks pretty reliable. Let's start with this. Remember, knight d7 drops the bishop. And now that the bishop is uh, tethered to the queen, oh, that's the that's the free piece I was talking about. Plus, probably checkmate. A bonus. Okay, not quite meat, but pretty good. <laughs> Not a bad follow-up. In here, I think we just keep it simple, capture it. This move runs into bishop f6. That also runs into f3. I guess pick your poison, but I think bishop f6 is the smoothest. There's no way to keep guarding this. And rook f1 will just lose a rook. Good game. Yeah, getting close to 1700. Getting close, but I mean, clearly, I think there's been a noticeable shift in the in the level that we've faced from 1600 to 1700. Like these these players can definitely play. Even they still make blunders in in the opening, but they can still make comebacks. You know, keeping the stick on the ice. Stick with the setup. That's a very strange move. Wow, okay. Really weird stuff here. I think because of how strange my opponent's setup is, I'm really <laughs> I'm really looking for ways to punish immediately. Um Let's see here. Okay, well, I'm gonna do it. I'll go knight c4. The thing is, bishop f4 can be met by e5, and I know it creates a weakness, but okay, black's gonna play d6, knight e7. It's actually not that bad. Here, I was thinking about playing this, which is a pawn sack, but he's gonna have to lose his dark square bishop, and he has got some serious dark square weaknesses if he doesn't have that bishop on the board. So let's give this one a shot. This is pretty, uh, pretty aggressive way of playing. Oh yeah, take take all my pawns, buddy. You can have that one as well. I'm just saying, look, the guy's got zero development. He's got a queen out, and those dark squares look disgusting. So that's my that's my compensation here. That's what I'm saying. That this position looks good because of that. Now. Taking on b7, it feels like that's just not, like, it's just not enough, you know? It just feels kind of lame. Like, that's me cashing in. That's what I get for all these pawns that I'm down. Doesn't feel good enough, you know? Let's have a think here. The nice thing is, if the knight moves anywhere, then we can kind of get that bishop in. That feels pretty good. I'm thinking about queen d2, because the thing is, I trap the queen if I go here as well. So this is also like, just kind of good, right? If, if the queen doesn't have this square, you can see that the queen is trapped. So it's already like, it's, it's already pretty much lost. If I wanted to really put the, the grip on the guy, I would go something like that. But you know, to, to be quite honest, we should really be. We should really be making a point about how bad his position is. Actually, we can make a point about how bad his position is by taking this way. This is how bad your position is. 
You can't even take my bishop <laughs> without losing your knight as well. But yeah, I mean, my opponent just got rocked here. There's, it's just a terrible, terrible position. Um, let's go here. For here, we can check and go there. That looks like it drops things. And if he ends up taking, I should have uh, rook e8 and queen e7, so. Oh, thought he was gonna go like that. Not quite. Here I have queen h4 still. That should be leading to some mate. I think we can do that. So we have queen here, queen here, and then queen there. Otherwise rook e8 will definitely lead to a mate. Yeah, I mean, that was an extremely, extremely one-sided game. But look, I mean, some some things have to be punished. I, I <laughs> Some things really have to be punished. The way my opponent was playing was so unacceptable. So first of all, queen b6 is a crazy move because in an open Sicilian, yeah, maybe queen b6 makes some sense. You take, knight takes, queen b6. I get it. That's a, that's a system. But queen b6 now, I've already said, look, I'm not I'm not playing in the center at all. So you're playing queen here for no reason. Then e6, okay. But then g6. And then it's like, why did you play this move? Just play g6 and Fianchetto and get out of there. So this is too much. And then a6 out of nowhere. I don't even have a knight on c3. There's no knight b5, nothing. So a6, e6, g6, plus a queen move. No, it's too much. So I do something where my bishop's wide open. I get another tempo. The dark square weaknesses are insane. And I've got every piece mobilized and developed. Black has nothing plus a queen. And it's moved 13. <laughs> just not acceptable. So okay, there's just a win immediately. And yeah, you can resign on move 15. No, it'll be two games. It'll be two games. All right. Let's get our setup here. Bishop g2. Yeah, and again... If I see a setup like this, where she's completely non-threatening, I'm definitely gonna be playing f4 and skipping knight f3 first. Like, I think it just makes sense. Yeah. He's kind of going for like, you know, this sort of setup, so. And usually when people do this, or when I do this, people like, they immediately just castle. They're like super thirsty to play on the other side of the board. Look, I get it, man, I get it. You wanna, you wanna tango? You wanna race on opposite sides? That's fine. We can race, man. We can race. Let's, let's open the position. Oof. Ooh, that just doesn't feel right. That just doesn't feel right. Something's off about that. How are we gonna prosecute this? Even ninety four somehow feels good. Let's just keep it simple. Open the C file. Bring our bishop out. Bring a rook here. Looks good enough to me. Because remember, bishop here, queen there is like <laughs> pretty much unstoppable checkmate if I get his king on b8. And we can assume the king will be there because I'm just going to play a rook, like a rook check. Okay. Well, once again, this just looks like it's going to be a very one-sided game. Like, my opponent's not developing any pieces. You, you got to punish people that play like this. I don't even want to take his pieces because they're so worthless. Like, <laughs> his pieces haven't even moved off the back rank. They're completely worthless. I don't even want them. Like, it's embarrassing for me to exchange for a piece that hasn't even moved yet. Uh, there we go, I wanna trade this guy. That rook has been active, so yeah, I wanna trade for that guy. Okay. But I mean, this is just like a sad, sad game. <laughs> this is just a 
This is what happens though. It is. Queen here. How do we uh, finish the execution? Shield your eyes. Yeah. So Queen here, he's going to play Bishop there and he, he does survive for a few moves, which I'm not a fan of. Um, knight here, followed by Pawn there, does look very tempting. I think we're going to go for that. Like, at this point, I could make literally about any move on the chessboard, and it would be an extremely good move. Well, so let me just say that. But right here, pushing that pawn up, I, th I think that's good enough. Like, it's just, he doesn't have any pieces playing the game. They're just not even there. I think we just take and go e5. Look at this. Like, this is just not... They're, they're not even there. You got... You got no pieces helping your king, bro. How are you gonna survive here? It's completely naked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He stopped to think now. Now he's thinking. Alpha. I don't care about bishop takes c5. I don't even want to see this guy start to run away. I don't want to entertain that. No, you're staying right where you are and you're getting mated. Why am I abusing 1600s? Because I've abused 800s, 900s, 1000s, 1100s, 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, and 1500s, and I haven't quite got to the 1700s. But it's a long speed run, stick around. GG. Yay. Well, I have to say these last couple games have been pretty convincing, pretty one-sided. When, like, the, the nice thing is, really, that the, the setup that I'm proposing to you, this King's Indian attack, I think it works fantastic against people that play this. You've seen people that play this, right? In almost every ELO category, there's some, you, you've run into someone, maybe he's tilted, or maybe it's his main opening, doesn't matter. But they'll do something that doesn't take the center, doesn't develop pieces quickly. I think that this King's Indian attack setup is great against this. Provides a great control of the center, great shield. If they castle this way, you don't have any pieces in the way. You can just full send all your pawns up the board. Easy attack. And if they castle this way, well, you've got the attack ready, set, go. So when people come at you with this stuff, like I don't even bother. Which is why when I'm doing the opening, you see me not play Knight F3 so quickly. Because I don't know if they're going to play some like normal stuff or if they're just going to go like this. So I'm saving knight f3. I'm doing all the other useful moves. So that if I see like they're just doing nothing, yeah, I'll play f4 and I'll play knight f3. Instead of knight f3, knight h4, f4, knight back, you know, like that's too slow. I don't want my knight here if he castles this way. So I prefer to just save a move there and play f4 straight away. It's sort of like a hedgehog differential, yeah. You could say that. It's like a hedgehog formation. And we're playing a 1700. And we got the King's Indian straight up. Let's go. Whoa, buddy. All right. It's a full send kind of game. He's, uh, he's sending the artillery at us. Love to see it. Yeah, it's the four pawns attack. We haven't faced it so far, but honestly, we kind of have faced a version of it. You remember the players that they play like 
they play like e45 really quickly and then f4 and c3 it's it's similar to that like similar vibes so once again what i would say as a plan is like yeah try to try to open things up as much as as much as possible now usually i go for a c5 thing in positions like this c5 and e6 it kind of turns into a like honestly it kind of turns into a benoni at that point or it could an f4 benoni so c5 i think is the main and probably best move maybe objectively best uh other moves like knight d7 is a little suspicious because this move forces your knight to go somewhere you don't really want it to go knight c6 is playable but i think for all intents and purposes c5 is just this is good stuff see how he wants to play He has many options. He could do nothing. He could take. He could play d5. He could play e5. But anytime it gets really, really messy, like e5, and just like there's so much tension, that almost always favors black. Like that's the position you want. You want a super messy game like that. Okay, he's really in the tank here. I would have to think that c5 is a pretty common move that he faces. Okay, he does go for d5. And the, the follow-up moves here are either e6 or b5. Again, two moves that challenge the pawn formation. Both of them look pretty... Uh, pretty solid b5 goes for more of a benko setup and e6 more of a benoni setup i'm gonna say e6 is a little bit more standard definitely want to take asap and it'd be pretty hard to get me not to play rook e8 so we'll do rook e8 Oof. all right we're we're going straight for it we are getting into it here. Takes a knight g4. We have to... Uh, oh, okay. I was going to say we have to... Let's take... We have to try to put pressure on the center pawns here. They can't just be allowed to sit there. And it was getting very, very difficult for him to actually be able to defend that. I think just bishop takes. Um, this move looks like a pretty serious mistake because of this. I think the game might end pretty quickly. <laughs> I think the game did end pretty quickly. <laughs> That's a pretty quick finish. Well, just like that. 15 moves. What can I say? King's Indian. Look, I'm fully castled and I've got a rook pointing at your king and you're still pushing pawns. Eventually, like, I'm just attacking your pawns too many times. You can't just push, push, push. Like, it doesn't just work like that. That your pawns can just, just sail all the way down the board. Because if you think about it logically, the chessboard, you could just cut it in half. If something is past your half of the chessboard, generally speaking, especially on something like move 10, it's going to be a lot easier for your opponent's pieces on their half of the board to attack your pawns also on their half of the board. Like, not all your pieces can reach that far. It's just just not going to be that easy to protect. So there's such a thing as overextending. And in the four pawns attack for white against the King's Indian, your goal is to get white to overextend, to, to push the pawns further than they should be. 100 accuracy? Have you guys ever seen 100 accuracy? What the? <laughs> 
I don't think I've ever seen 100% accuracy <laughs> until now. I didn't even know it was possible. Other than like a two move win or something like that, maybe. But this was a 15 move game. 100% accuracy. I'm worried if I click on it, it's not going to be 100. You know what I mean? As soon as I click on it, it's going to be like... <laughs> oh, hang on. Let me analyze this at a deeper... Actually... Actually, you were more around 95. Actually. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can uh, bear to click on it. They're going to start analyzing my game with a stronger engine. And reduce my accuracy. I got to leave it there. I can't, oh no, I can't click it. I can't click it. It's gonna ruin it. Are you guys saying it won't ruin it? Or are you saying it will ruin it, but screw you? Because it sounds like the second. It will ruin it, but still click it. This is a lose-lose for me. <laughs> I don't win here. And we got first time chatters coming in telling me to click it. The chat engagement is off the charts. X Moto Linux, it 100% it does. Or should I say it 99.6% does in a few seconds when I click this. No, but I'm feeling kind of antsy now. Now there's a lot of pressure. This is a pretty big deal. That's the first 100% accuracy I've ever, ever had. And you guys want me to click it and ruin it. I'll never have it again. I have to take a screenshot. No one will believe me. Okay. We're still solid. So far, so good. So far, so... Man, it doesn't know what to do with me. Every move is literally perfect. I'm literally a god. Book, 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 book. Great move. Great move. Best. Game over. Perfect game. A hundred percent accuracy. A hundred percent accuracy setup. You can play this too. Easy to learn, 100% accuracy opening. Never make a mistake again with the King's Indian. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you can do so right here. And don't forget to click that bell and turn the post notifications on. And if you're looking for more of the King's Indian speedrun, you can check it out right here. Thanks for watching.